Hi, this is Jill from HowToStats.com. In today's video, I'm going to be analyzing data from Warren Buffett uh, against the uh, S&P 500 uh, based on a blog I wrote um, on my blog, HowToStats.com. Uh, and this, in this example, uh, I've taken data from uh, Berkshire Hathaway's annual report, uh, 2010. And I've got the data from 1965 all the way down to 2010. And I've got the matched performance, uh, investment performance for Berkshire uh, Hathaway or Warren Buffett and uh, S&P 500 in two different columns presented here. And I just took that from page four on the annual report. And in the blog I wrote, I tested the hypothesis that Warren Buffett's performance uh, may be just due to chance. And so maybe he's just getting lucky. Uh, and to actually do that analysis, I mentioned in the, in the blog that uh, I would show you how to do the analysis. It's quite simple, so you plot your data in these three columns. Now, before I go on, I'll, I'll note that I'm using a program called NCSS 2007, uh, which impressed me with uh, the ease with which you can do a randomization test to, uh, to hypothesis testing. It's quite unusual to get that in a comprehensive stats package. Either um, you just can't, there's just no option to do it, or you have to purchase an add-on, or you have to go through some kind of other Monte Carlo uh, analysis procedure uh, in, the, in another window. But in NCSS, it's, it's available to do it right in, in the analysis, uh, the basic analysis. So you go into t-test, uh, t-test to sample. This is a matched pairs t-test because we've got uh, Buffett's performance 1965 was 23.8% and S&P 500 was 10%. So these are all matched pairs. So it's like a t-test uh, for paired groups or, or uh, within subjects t-test. Uh, so we go into analysis, t-test, t-test to sample. And I've already done the analysis so you can see that Buffett S&P is already in the response variables. And how I put those in there was quite simply, I chose Buffett and S&P and added them into that uh, box. And because this is not an independent groups t-test, this is left blank here. There are no group variables for this. This is strictly a matched pair, matched um, t-test, matched pairs t-test. The next tab I'll note to you is the reports, or sorry, the resampling. I actually unchecked all these. These are checked automatically. I unchecked them because I didn't want that information. So in the resampling is the other um, tab that you'll want to look at. And at the bottom here, we've got randomization test options. So that's how easy it is to select how many samples you want. I'm going to choose 10,000 because I've got Camtasia running. It's going to be a bit slower, but overall, it's actually quite fast. Uh, this is not an especially fast computer. I think the um, CPU gigahertz is something like 2.1, so quite standard. Uh, four gigs of memory. So that's really as simple as it is to do this analysis. You check check on the t-test, uh, select your variables, and then resampling, specify how many samples you want. So I'm going to click Run. And here the it's calling it a Monte Carlo iteration. It's going up to 9,000, and it's 10,000 already. And here's the output, and we've got the means for Warren Buffett, 21.56 and 10.96. Those are the means. So a mean difference of 10.60. Now, that's huge. It's a huge difference, uh, at least numerically. But what's the probability associ associated with this mean difference? Is this by chance? And conventionally, we use p less than 0 0.05 as a statistically significant effect. That's a, you know, a arguably an arbitrary a criterion. But over here we've got the randomization test that we use because we obviously don't have um, a random sample in this case. This is why the randomization test I think is particularly useful here is if we want to test the statistical significant difference uh, between the 21.55 and the 10.56 we obviously don't have random sampling so we can't use conventional t-tests arguably. Um, and I would argue that bootstrapping is not really appropriate here either because our sample size is so small, or it's not really a sample size. We've got every data point. It's the population. It's 46. 
So I felt like I was left with just randomization tests to test this uh, for significance. And what we've got, based on the randomization test, 10,000 randomized samples is equal to p equal 0 0.0011. So this is very statistically significant uh, by conventional standards. And we could say that Warren Buffett is uh, clearly, you know, very unlikely to be performing just by chance, outperforming the S&P just by chance. Very unlikely. Uh, people might argue um, that this procedure is not the best way to do this. I'd like to see alternative approaches to doing it. There is one assumption to randomization that arguably may be violated in this case, which is uh, random sampling, randomized uh, selections to the treatment groups, but there's no treatment in this case. Um, but uh, I do think the randomization is probably the best approach to testing uh, this. And I would uh, be interested to see people people's performance on other investments uh, tested against this. So other whippersnappers, if you will, coming out into the um, investment industry arguing that they're performing above chance. Well, we could test that with a randomization test based on this uh, approach. Thanks. Bye.